it is me, Dr. Renee, and once again, it is Thursday, 6 o'clock Eastern, 5 o'clock Central, and 3 o'clock Pacific. Um, one day we're going to get a name for this, or maybe, do you guys know I actually have a show, the Ask Dr. Renee show? It's on my YouTube channel, and you can see we have over 100-something episodes. It's pretty awesome. But, and my guest actually has been on my show, the guest today, and she's been here at Black Doctor before. So, Black Doctor, you guys know that February is Heart Month. Yes, Valentine's Day, but we're talking about the ticker in your body, your heart. So last week, if you didn't see it, you should go watch it. We had an amazing doctor talk to us about her conge conge ugh, congestive heart failure and how she was able to um, treat herself. But today, we are going to talk to my absolute favorite nutritionist, Dr. Rovinia Brock, better known as Dr. Rowe. And if you read the post, then you know Dr. Rowe has been on every show you could think of. Anderson Cooper, The View. She helped Sherry Shepard lose weight from The View. I mean, she'd been on everything. Meredith Vieira, she'd been everywhere. Dr. Oz, everywhere. And she's written several books. So maybe she'll tell us about her most recent book. I believe it is Final 15. Um, but um, And I don't have it with me today here, but I do have it. It's a gem, but she's going to talk to us about our food because food is medicine. And she's been on before to tell us about that. In the beginning of COVID, we talked about food and what we could do with COVID. But today we're going to talk about our hearts. So everyone, please let me know where you are tuning in from. And Dr. Roll, welcome to the show. Uh-oh, she's frozen. Hi. Oh, Hi. there she is. She's fine. She's fine. She's fine. Pleasure okay. to be with you and all the way up. All of a sudden, now your internet's acting really crazy. Okay. So it's good. always okay. a love to be with me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So let's All right. start. Are we good? Yes, we're, we're good now. Okay. So let's start at the first beginning, as I love to say. So heart health. What are, I want to just, let's just touch on some nuggets that could help people. Because I know we can't have everyone change their diets tonight. So what are some some small tips that you would give to somebody that came into you and their doctor told them your cholesterol is horrible, your blood pressure is horrible, we've got to do something. And they don't want to take medicine. So um, may I tell you a story first? Yes, yes, please. <laughs> to put this in perspective, Okay, yeah, to put this in perspective, uh, first of all, I was the kid who had to run, get the digitalis and nitroglycerin for my guardian who was raising me after having lost my mother to, static, to stomach cancer. But my guardian, um, though a loving parent, a loving parent, I couldn't have done without her. Okay. Um, her heart, blood, it was wrong. Always came with it, with it too, you know. But um, that's the funny part. The downside, though, is she was on nitroglycerin and um, and uh, you know medication for um, coronary artery disease uh, specifically, and then some of arrhythmia, and she eventually ended up having to have a pacemaker. Well, so I still say I grew up with this in my I grew up with this in the home. I had family members. My mother was a single mother, a single parent, so on my own my whole life. Uh, we had we had family members. My grandfather. Um, had hypertension or high blood pressure, as black as we know it, and he suffered from uh, a, a big stroke, a major stroke, and then several small strokes thereafter. Right, uh, because of his hypertension. I had uncles who lost limbs because of diabetes and because of uh, peripheral vascular disease, which is what um, black people call having poor circulation. So I would just tell you that this is a uh, subject that's near and dear to my heart because I've been in the fight with the Heart Association, both nationally and locally for the better part of my career. 
uh, trying to work with, um, you know, them to help our community heal itself or get the help that we need. So yeah, um, we're gonna talk about the food, but I just wanted to give you that little bit of background because the, the fact is, you know, about 48% of African-American women and 44% of African-American men all suffer from some form of heart disease, okay? So whether that's, that's coronary artery disease, whether it's congestive heart failure, whether it's heart, you know, that, you know, all of those kinds of, you know, um, maladies though, there are other maladies that come with this. So the hypertension that I talked about, type two diabetes um, and obesity, all of these things are a factor, risk factors for heart disease. So, um, and, the, and, and obviously they often go hand in hand. You know, mm -hmm. it's rare that you will find one of us with just one of those conditions. They, we usually get the, what's called the cluster of those, those diseases that we call um, in my business, lifestyle diseases. So you'll, you'll show, you'll, you'll have a, a brother who a sister show up with, with hypertension or high blood pressure with um, having had a stroke or having, have, uh, having diabetes, type two diabetes and a heart condition. You see what I mean? The whole cluster. The, and there are a lot of reasons why this is true for us because while um, heart disease has been going, the numbers for, for um, death, heart rate death, so, so, the, so the death rate for heart disease has been going down, believe it or not. But for us, what? It's going up. It is increasing. We still have um, a higher percentage of, of heart disease than our white counterpart. So um, there, there are a lot of reasons for this, but, but one of the things that we know works are food and physical activity. These are, these are really um, good tools to and to and, and prevent these kinds of diseases that we've been talking about. That's what I wanna to talk to you about tonight. You know, um, it's not, everybody doesn't have, a, we don't all have to have a, a collective heart attack, okay? Right. We can prevent this. Um, and one of the ways to do it, as I said, it, go ahead, go ahead. No, I didn't say anything. I was laughing. I was like, I was laughing. We don't need to have a collective heart attack. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. Yeah, we don't have to have a, we, we don't have to have a collective heart attack, you know, because Many people think that just because your grandmother or your grandfather or, you know, uh, mama had, you know, these diseases, you know, because they had a heart attack, because they had coronary artery disease, you know, you think that because it runs in your family that uh, that's your lot in life. And I'm here to say that's not so. That does not have to be true for you. The fact is um, heart disease starts really, really early. We, we know that... Um, during World War II, uh, they looked into the arteries of six-year-olds and found plaque and found, found uh, heart disease. So they found plaque in the arteries of six-year-olds. So that means that heart disease begins not when you are an adult. It begins very early in life and sometimes much earlier. But, if, but by the time you're six, if you see, heart, if you see uh, plaque in your arteries, that means the disease process has started long before for that okay so the thing is from the time we are um it, we come into the world and we're out of the womb that's the time to start feeding that's the time for moms to get start getting giving um babies the healthiest food choices that you can and and i understand that in our community it's a struggle it's a struggle because one of the reasons that we have the, that we we suffer disproportionately from all of these lifestyle diseases that I've been talking about is because we have poor access to health care and we have poor access to clean, nutritious food. That is a factor. OK, and it's a fact. So what are the things that we can do with what we have? And the other thing, too, is for physical activity. Some people don't have walking neighborhoods mm -hmm. because you got to dodge bullets when you go outside your house. So you're right. That's also a factor. So all of those things combined, when you look at all of those issues, uh, you understand why our plight is bigger than everything else's, right? Because right. 
And I, I'm just going to say it. Time to reason all these things exist. You know it as well as I do. Right? So how do we begin to, um, to prevent uh, and to manage whatever we may be dealing with? But how do we begin to prevent the disease? I'm going to say, first of all, food is a really important factor. You know, there's a popular expression that laughter is the best medicine. And um, I believe that too, but I got to tell you, food is right there at the top. It is medicine. Food is your medicine. Okay. Um, and, and if you, you know, and it doesn't take a whole lot for you to eat in a way that's going to protect you from these diseases that are taking, that are killing us. Our forks are killing us as a community. They are. And we can change that. And also, you didn't mention also food so, deserts is another problem that we, we have in our community too sometimes is that there's no grocery store that has good foods. There's only the corner store, which we all know does not usually have anything fresh. Um, so that, that's another problem. But I want you to also stress that we don't, you can enjoy some, you know, treats, but you just have to enjoy those treats. You can't indulge in them continuously. So go ahead. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, of course you can, you can enjoy treats. You, you can, um, you want to, you want to be intentional, uh, and mindful about the treats that you enjoy, but let's first talk about, let's talk about the things that you really, we want you to put on your plate so that you can protect yourself from not only heart disease, but, um, many 13 forms of cancer and, um, hypertension as well. Uh, diabetes as well. All of I said, all of these things come together as a cluster, like I said. So let's talk about what, what's the blueprint? What does the diet look like? What should your meal plan look like? What are some must-have foods in your diet to keep you safe, right? And protect you. The first is, and you know I'm going to say it, fruit and vegetables. we got to have colorful vegetables and fruit. Um, there's something called the DASH diet, right? dietary approaches to stop hypertension. And it's not only to stop hypertension because this diet, uh, even in this way, has moved, has built really an overarching meal plan uh, um, based on the same science that my book is. Uh, so uh, I would tell you that dietary, the dietary approaches to, to stop or the DASH diet uh, really necessitates that you eat vegetables and fruit. Um, it, there is a low, um, a small amount of, of whole grains that you're going to add to this diet. You want lean protein and then low fat uh, or non-fat milk. So to that, I fat milk, right? Uh, or dairy. Uh, but, but you, there are vegan options for that now. So, uh, this is a diet that was developed in the nineties. That's how right. long it's been around. And it's very akin to the Mediterranean diet, which is at, also at the top of the list. So the science that the hypertension, the, the, the DASH diet is built on and the way that they're using the DASH diet now is basically just like the diet that that's in this book, that's in my book. So all that is. You're going to have more vegetables and fruit. Um, you're going to add some whole grains, depending on the stage that you're in. Okay, the stage of the meal plan that you're in. Because when you, if if weight loss is your goal, get healthy um, and prevent hypertension and, and and heart disease. Then if weight loss is the goal, then we we really do need to stimulate your metabolism to work better for you, right? because it wasn't doing its best job in the moment that you're gaining weight. So to get you to a healthy weight, that's what we want to do to get you to a healthy weight, then you're going to eat this way. So the first couple of weeks you're going to have vegetables, fruit, you'll have your low fat dairy or, or non-fat dairy. Um, you'll have lean protein in the forms of fish, chicken, turkey, um, even red meat. Uh, if that's what, if you like me, uh, then if you're carnivore, then lean red meat. I do uh, highly recommend to the extent that you can 
get a uh, grass fed 100% grass fed organic when you do go, you know, to the meat. And I would also suggest that you don't do red meat more than eight ounces occasionally, not week. I mean, there's a couple times. Um, not more than eight ounces a week. We should choose. That's the way. A couple of weeks back, like for me, um, my what I recommend is not even doing um, whole grains. You integrate these into your meal plan as you stoke your metabolism. So when you when you stimulate your metabolism to work more, to work harder for you, and you see yourself losing weight, then you move to the phase at which you can you know, um, include your whole grains, whole grain breads and cereals, um, like oats, like uh, um, a whole sprouted, uh, gr um, whole sprouted grain breads, like Ezekiel breads, those Ezekiel breads and cereals, because those are made of the whole wheat or the whole grain, so that you get the benefit from the energy from those carbohydrates but first of the first couple of weeks you really just want to stick with leafy green vegetables um and vegetables are plenty right there are some vegetables that you could eat um copious amounts of like there's no limit for example vegetables like squash zucchini um summer squash tomatoes cucumbers asparagus all leafy green, all of those, you can eat copious amount of those and not have to worry about it. But here's a clicker. You don't want to be cooking your greens with fat back and ham hocks, okay? Because not only does that add fat, it adds sodium. And you're talking about, and we're talking about a kind of uh, fat, which is saturated fat, which is the thing that sets you up for heart disease, the very conversation we're having right now. So... You want to you want to round your plate out, round your meal out, so that you have a lot of color. Now, here's the thing about the vegetables and fruit. A lot of people think it's healthy, it's expensive to eat healthy. Not necessarily, because the same nutrition, the same nutrients you get from fresh vegetables, if broccoli is an example, you from the frozen variety than you do from the fresh. Okay, so you can have fresh, you can have frozen vegetables and fruit. Those are less expensive. Those are cheaper than buying fresh. Um, because let's face it, right now we're in a moment with, with in this pandemic where the price of your food dollar is outrageous. Uh, so I recommend going to frozen and, instead of fresh. Also, um, for beans, because I want you to have so part of your proteins are going to be not only fish, chicken, turkey, and beef or red meat, but also beans, eggs, nuts. That's what this, that's what the DASH diet, you know, um, co consists of. Nuts, eggs, legumes, like lentils, you know, and peas. And if you have a problem, if you have eating beans, as it's a high producing food, you don't have to spend money. And third, you soak your, if you're doing a uh, baking soda. So you have baking soda to the water that you're soaking the beans in. If you're having canned beans, rinse them. So, because you know the juice in your canned beans, let's just say it's black beans and there's, there's what looks like juice, but it's a heavy sort of milky looking, you know, yeah, that contains a whole lot of starch, a lot of starch. And it also contains a lot of sodium. So make sure if you're going to buy canned beans, if you're going to buy canned black eyed peas, get the reduced or low sodium varieties because the, the canning process itself um, means that there's always going to be a lot of sodium. So wait a minute. You said put baking soda in the water for the beans if you're, you have dried beans. And that is for what reason? You if you have dried so. beans, Soak them, soak them, soak your dried beans overnight. And to that water, you can add baking soda. Um, another thing, another trick is 
if you even this works for dry work can being with can beans and some of this so add a little vinegar so because you want to you want to you want to drain the juice the quote unquote juice from the beans in the can so now you're going to add vinegar and then you rinse them with clear water okay, that works so, too so oh, well, wait a minute the starch found in that juice causes the uh, production of air. yeah got it that's what i wanted okay interesting You got it? Yep. We got it. You got it? Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. So that that's what you're gonna do for your beans. Um, your your beans and um gas producing foods like that. So you but you you the whole the whole point is you wanna have you wanna add color to the diet, you wanna make your, your proteins lean and healthy, and you know you can eat you can eat some of your favorite food that you can cook. this is really all about how you're going to cook them and it's about how much you're going to have right so even if it ha happens to be a treat which is something that you mentioned earlier well can we still you know live on it eat a healthy diet live on the foods that you're talking about and have a treat of course you can but you just have to be about it so um i guess in emotional eating i uh, you know, women especially, but women and families through the process of um, stopping emotional eating, of, of overcoming emotional eating. And that's a question that always comes up. It's about, how, is there going to be a cheat day in my meal plan? Or is there going to be, can I still have a treat? Well, yeah, a treat. Yeah, I know. Everybody's planning their treats. That everybody's planning their cheats, right? And I, and I jokingly say to my clients, look, if you already start, you're starting out wanting to have a cheat day, you're already planning your failure. But, but the truth is you can have some of your favorite snacks. Um, I recommend you snack on fruit because I'm telling you, you can have some bomb uh, desserts out of fruit. Uh, there's nothing that beats uh, a baked apple, sprinkle some cinnamon, top it off with walnuts, and if you wanted to, you could even add ice cream. But now, or, or here's a better idea, you could add nice cream. So I make a, 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 an ice cream, nice cream, I do an almond milk, putting it in a blender or food processor and pulsing it with the, the frozen version of the fruit. So I keep frozen bananas on hand for smoothies and for desserts. I keep frozen mango on hand for the same reason. So you put you put your, your, your mango or your banana in your small food processor or your blender, whatever you have, pulse it, add your uh, a small amount of, of almond milk. So if we're talking about you, you making one serving for yourself, so one half cup serving then add like a banana you could even do a half and you're going to add uh about four tablespoons of the almond milk to that and you can use almond milk or oat milk oat works really well too because it's kind of frothy and it helps to add to the creamy consistency that you're looking for in in ice cream right but you can you can you know dark chocolate sprinkles on it you can put nuts on it but this is one way to have something that you really love, which is ice cream, which can be hugely high in fat and, 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 and sugar. And you can cut the, you can cut the, cut the sugar this way. Yeah. And, that's and you had, you had a piece of fruit that you the benefit of the fiber and the nutrients coming back and this. Yeah. 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 And fiber helps you to fill so up. You can have your treat. However, be mindful and be it. Yes, that's one of the reasons that, I mean, fiber, and there are a couple different kinds of fiber, but soluble fiber, for example, that you find in be beans, peas, in the skins of apples, 
Um, that fiber is called pet. There's a substance called pectin. These all work to um, reduce your cholesterol. These all work to cut cholesterol much in the same way that oats do does because it is a soluble, it contains a soluble fiber. Well, the same is true in the skins of apples. You find that you find pectin, which is also a soluble fiber. Yes, fiber does work to, um, not only does it help to fill you up, the other thing is it stabilizes your blood sugar. So soluble fiber sta stabilizes your blood sugar. So if you are diabetic, too diabetic and you're concerned about your blood sugar being elevated, this is one way to do it. Make sure you get enough soluble fiber. And that's through your beans, your peas, that's through the, your fruit. Uh, make sure you get that and your vegetables. Uh, we have a question. Why can some cultures eat white rice for okay. every meal, yet we are told to stay away from white rice and no more than about half a cup a day? So... First of all, I'm in one of those cultures that eat, would eat white rice with every meal. And I would never say that we can. They do is what it is. And unfortunately, we've lost family members because that's what they did. And that wasn't necessarily the right thing to do. Um, also, outside of that culture, um, most a lot of West Indian people, we eat white rice every day. But outside of him being West Indian, Black people, there was a whole lot of ways that our great grandmothers and grandfathers ate in the past that was not healthy, and there's no reason that we should continue to do it today. Mm -hmm. So I understand what you're saying, but there's not a, it's, it's not, we can, there's nothing special about our bodies that allows us to. When I ate white rice every day, I didn't look the way I look today. So <laughs> it's a give and take. Am I right or am I wrong? <laughs> She's frozen again. Well, white rice yeah. is not going to make you gain some. Say it again. Yeah, no, you're right. Come back. You, you're frozen. Go ahead. Okay, okay. So white rice is not going to make you gain a thousand pounds. On the other hand, there are some there black rice, red rice, and brown rice are um are a much more and healthier for you. They can antioxidants. And these three rattles are these, these um, uh, structures in your, in your body that are the, responsible for the disease process. So free radicals cause cancer, heart disease, and those chronic diseases that we've been talking about. So once you start getting those ravaging, you know, taking up all the nutrients, you, you want, uh, this is one way to combat the, the growth and your spread of free radicals taking over um, and diminishing the effects of the food that, you, that you're taking in. So if you, take, you eat this kind of food, you, you, these are foods that fight free radicals for you and help um, defend you against the disease process and heart disease in particular, heart disease, cancer uh, in particular. That said, you can, it, it's not that you can't eat white rice, but uh, I'm just giving you better options. Your, be your best option is black rice. Um, your second best option is red rice. And your third best option is brown rice. And I would say, and it's not even white rice necessarily making you gain a whole lot of weight. White rice, especially if you are a type two diabetic or any type of diabetic, it's going to turn into carbs and sugar and it's going to throw off your blood sugars, which is why they tell you that you shouldn't have a lot of white rice. So um, I, I didn't know about black oh, that's rice. That's a good until, point. Yeah. Yeah. Until when I was, um, I do Weight Watchers, everyone knows. And so when I was counting my points, wild rice, because it has that black rice in it, was very few points. And I was like, I can have how much? Mm -hmm. I was blown away, but it makes sense from what you just said. Yeah, so black, red, brown, and wild rice. These are all four rice categories or varieties that work to stabilize your blood sugar. To rice your blood sugar. Elevated. 
unless you are looking to stay sugar. And stay watching your blood sugar, by the way, is a process that helps you stave off weight or ever not. So yeah, to your point, uh, you want to choose foods that are going to, to, to stabilize your blood sugar as opposed to uh, drive it up right. or elevate it. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's to maintain weight and to um, and to fight diabetes and some of these other chronic diseases that we've been talking about, including obesity. Can you please talk about portions for the protein, um, the uh, meat protein? Yeah, so um, portions, when you say meat protein, Doc, you know, um, it just... The fact that we have to say meat protein, it, it reminds me of the moment that we're having right now where um, there's a big vegan push and, you know, there's beyond meat and there's this kind of, you know what I'm saying? All that. Um, so when you say meat protein, I'm like, wow, we, we now have to stipulate. <laughs> we have, that's where we are. We have to stipulate it. And on, some measure, on, on, on the one hand, some of that is good. All that to say, if we're talking about meat, we're talking about four ounces. And I know this is going to sound uh, bonkers to, to a lot of people who eat a lot more than that. But we're talking about uh, a thickness about the front. If you look at the palm of your hand, the thickness of your hand is about uh, fingers and, and, and where the joint is, okay? about something that you know about that size about that size um so four ounces of meat chicken and fish uh for beans we're talking a cup uh you know for and beans and lentils and those kind of things we're talking a cup if we're talking nuts uh, it depends on the nut peanuts are about 28 whereas almonds might be 11 or 20, uh, almonds are 22. So, um, you know, I, I have for this, but you can look this and be able to, and you can also eyeball your portions of food because it is, this is part of this process, like how you're going to eat and, and how you're going to plan your, your, your food. If you don't, if you don't practice portion control, you are screwed, period. There's no nice way to say to say it. If you want to be healthy and fit, portion control has got to be a part of the way you do things, right? And it's not hard. It's not difficult. It can be easy. In, in my book, um, Lose Your Final 15, I give you household, real life items that you can compare, you can use to eyeball a portion of food. From salad dressing to meat, fish, chicken, to vegetables, to carbs, to all of it. We have another question. Um, uh, is there any cheese that you can recommend that are healthier than sharp cheddar cheese and American cheese? Definitely, because <laughs> American cheese is not even really cheese. <laughs> It's processed cheese food, right? It always has been. It's not. So, uh, laughing cheese, which comes in a little wheel, uh, it's about 50 calories per wheel, which is phenomenal. Uh, it has to, and, and it comes in a lot of different varieties white cheddar, um, it, it comes in Swiss, it comes in a lot of different varieties of real cheese. So oh, this in a little. Also, um, I would think cheese that's not goat cheese is really wonderful. I love it when certain dishes. Uh, any that is not hard um, at room temperature. So the hard cheddar, those are the ones that are highest in, in saturated fat. And saturated fat is the stuff that clogs your arteries and keeps your blood blood from flowing to all parts of the body the way it's supposed to. So it's laughing cow cheese, because you broke up, laughing cow cheese, and it comes in several varieties, so you can check that, and goat cheese. 
Um, but I look, I'm just I'm mm -hmm. not really big on cheese. Also, there are vegan cheeses on there. Also, what, so if you too. want, I was getting ready to say if you want vegan cheese, so there's Dia um or Dea cheese. That's one. There are a number of brands of, of vegan cheese. Right. But just watch what the vegan what is what is the fat or the protein in the vegan cheese? It's not a lot of protein, first of all, in vegan cheese. Why? Because it's made from plants. Plants like coconut. So you, Daya cheese, for example, is creamy and, you know, and you get warm, you know, feeling is, that's what you're looking Let me tell you, protein. and the source of fat that they use is coconut oil. Now, coconut oil, is not as healthy how coconut oil is much better used um outside of your body <laughs> to, or, to look to grease up your, your your knees and your and your feet it is much better used that way than it is inside of your body because even though it's a plant it's still a saturated fat yeah okay saturated fats will cause uh coronary artery disease so just said, look, so. You're looking for in cheese just look to make sure what look, look look to see what look, look to see what the ingredients in the cheese are and what what's what's the source of fat and the source of protein you're not going to get any protein Okay. Yeah, well, just you got to know how to read labels, and it's it's you know, well, it's any no cheese fun. is soft um, and not hard. Okay. So uh, I said, okay. So we, I think we have stretched Dr. Rowe's internet service to its limits today. Um, thankfully, there will be um, captions. Uh, subtitles when it's um it'll be closed caption once it re like when you play it again so you guys will be able to see what she was saying but she did give great information um and I also wanted to say the portion for your meat the palm size of the palm of your hand is usually about your four ounces and so she told you the thickness is here and mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and then the size of the palm of your hand is usually mm -hmm. about the four ounces so hopefully that will help you and then um and Go ahead. If it sounds, if, if it's fish too, we're talking about six ounce fish, depending on the kind of fish. So like a piece of haddock um, uh, or cod, we're talking about six ounces in most cases. Um, please show your book and then I'm going to put a link yeah. in the post. And so since you, you, since you asked, Since you asked um, about having your snacks, just make sure that if you're going to eat your snacks out of a bag or a box, for in front of a television to do it, take out the real portion and let it go. Don't don't eat snacks. Don't eat snacks larger than what you can fit in the palm of your hand. Not all the way out here with all with your fingers, the palm of your in your fist, you, whatever you can fit in your fist, make limit you, your snacks to that size. OK. Good. Thank you. That's good. Grab the book so that they can see the book and I will um, put a link in the post so you guys can okay. definitely go check it out. Hopefully she's moving and we just don't see her moving to go get the book. There it is. Perfect. Yeah. Lose your final 15. So I will put a link in the post so you guys can go and check that out. I know she would greatly appreciate it. And um, as an author myself now, I know she would appreciate it. And I have put in the post the links to her website, though, so you can visit her website, which I'm sure her book is on there, everythingrow.com. But um, and I've also been posting, if you paid attention, I posted her social media handles. Instagram, everything row, Facebook, one Dr. Rowe. Um, and she's very receptive. So if you, you know, if you say something, she's going to respond. She has a really amazing community on Facebook. But thank you so much, Dr. Rowe. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for your time. And thank you for sharing all of your fabulous knowledge with us once again. 
And I will, um, like I said, I will put the post, I will put the link to the book in the post so you guys can check that out. But her other links are all in her, her Facebook, Instagram, all of that is in the post. So you guys can keep up with Dr. Rowe and all the amazing things she's doing. She's helped, and that's in the post too. She's helped millions of pounds get dropped by lots and lots and lots of people. So you need to definitely listen to what she's saying. She knows what she's talking about. And Dr. Rowe looks so fabulous. But you would never know. Dr. Rowe is, and I saw that episode of Dr. Oz, which was so funny. Um, Dr. Rowe is is not the 30-something that she looks. So you have to go look that up too, because it is amazing how good she looks, but it's because she takes such great care of herself. And her husband, who is watching tonight, and I don't know if she saw that, thank you to Dr. Riggins, my colleague in medicine, who obviously takes very good care of her as well. Good night, everyone. Hopefully she'll come back and she can wave. Good night.